Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you all for joining me. This is episode 16 of Hockey on the Spot, and today we are continuing with the 30 teams in 30 days for the month of August. We, today we are concluding not just our Central Division tour, but our tour around the Western Conference when we talk about the Winnipeg Jets. And the Winnipeg Jets finally moving to the Western Conference where they belong. After two seasons, um, they were stuck in the Southeast Division for the last two seasons since the move from Atlanta. Um, and that made things very hard for them. They had to the most travel time of any team. They had to daily travel down to face the Carolina Hurricanes, the Washington Capitals, and then both the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Luckily for them, though, that's not going to be an issue anymore. The travel time is now easier for them. They are no longer in the Eastern Conference. Now back in the Western Conference where they belong in the Central Division. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be easier for them. Though the travel time is going to be much better for them, the teams that they are going to be in the division with are going to be a lot harder. Yes, they escaped the Washington Capitals, but now they have to go up against teams like the Chicago Blackhawks, the St. Louis Blues, a Minnesota Wild team that's rebuilding, that's pretty much going in the right direction, and a Nashville Predators team that could quite potentially be back in the playoffs for the upcoming season because of Seth Jones. Owens, and then you also got the Colorado Avalanche and the Dallas Stars in there. The Dallas Stars looking more dangerous than ever, and the Colorado Avalanche now get Nathan McKinnon on board. That's not going to make things easy for the Winnipeg Jets this season. <clears throat> Last year, they finished ninth place in the Eastern Conference, um, just one spot out of a playoff spot. And it was pretty much inevitable that they weren't going to make it, even though on paper it looked like they were close. They were the first team in the entire National Hockey League to end their short and regular season. And <clears throat> then, but, that, but you then had the three teams that they had to root against, the Ottawa Senators and both New York teams, the New York Rangers and the New York Islanders. They had to root against all three of those teams and hope that at least one of them could not make it in, but all three of them had games at hand over the Jets, so it was inevitable that they were not going to make it. Now, and now you got to wonder if they're going to make it this year. Well, who knows? It's going to be a very interesting season for the Winnipeg Jets, even though they go up against harder teams. Um, I think... I mean, they they could have a better year because of the shortened travel time now. Um, they fit, And they also finished 18th in the league last season with 51 points, a 24-21-3 and three record. So they did finish over 500. It overall was a good season for them. They just did not make the playoffs. So with that being said, let's take a look at some of the moves that they've done this year. They... The Atlanta Thrashers now would have basically seven players that moved with them, moved with the franchise from the Atlanta when they were the Atlanta Thrashers, still on the team. Andrew Ladd, Andre Pavlik, Evander Kane, Tobias Enstrom, and now they get Zach Bogosian signed up long-term, they get Blake Wheeler signed up long-term, and they get Brian Little signed up long-term. Um, Little and Wheeler both avoiding arbitration. Um, so, um, but with those guys signed up long term, everybody, they now have 11 players signed up through at least 2015, 2016, which is a great thing. Um, so they got a lot of players locked in long term. But because of these long term contracts, a few departures had to be made. Um, one of them being defenseman Ron Hainsey, who is still on the board. As a matter of fact, <laughs> every one of their departures that have not gone to the KHL have yet to sign with an NHL team, but Ron Hainsey is the main one. It looked like he was going to sign with the Carolina Hurricanes at one point, but that has not happened yet. They are going to let him walk. He will not be back in Winnipeg this season, and he 
could be their most significant loss this season. But some other actual subtractions include Nick Antropov, big, big center. He goes to sign in the KHL. Alexander Burmistrov, a guy who they picked 10th overall, excuse me, 8th overall in 2010. Um, he has decided to go to the KHL, signing a two-year deal over there after his little confliction with Ole Jokinen, who has a year remaining on his contract. Antti Miettinen is gone, Aaron Gagnon is gone, and Derek Meech is also gone. So those are some more minor losses, um, Aaron Gagnon and Derek Meech. Antti Miettinen, I always liked Miettinen, so me personally, I would I would consider that a decent-sized loss. Not as big as Antropov or Burmistrov, but they lose some depth when with losing him. But with those departures also came some additions. Starting with some of one of the more minor additions, getting Andrew Gordon from the Vancouver Canucks to add a little bit of depth. Um, a guy who will be called up for in, if there's a lot of injuries that occur. Um, they also have def signed defenseman Adam Party coming over from the Buffalo Sabres. <laughs> guy who will probably, at least to begin the year, be a 7th or 8th defenseman, but has top 6 defenseman potential and probably could be move into the top six later on in the year if Jacob Truba, who is going to start the year, um, does not d does not prove what he's lived up to be and needs another year to develop, or if a guy like Grant Klitsum, um does not play well, who is the other factor, in my opinion, the other guy who I could see being scratched at points. But he'll start the season, too. Um, Paul Posma is there as well as another seventh guy. Um, they, so a good signing there in my opinion. And then some of the other significant moves, the other significant signing, they bring in right winger Matt Halischuk coming over from the Nashville Predators. Very popular player in Nashville. Has lived up to be a little more skillful than people originally anticipated. Um... In Nashville, he learned a lot of things, and with his addition, he's become a very good depth player. Um, and back in 2011, Matt Halaschuk scored a huge goal in the playoffs in overtime in Game 2 against the Vancouver Canucks. So this is a guy who can score big goals in big situations um, and a good defensive forward as well. So I like Matt Halaschuk. I think he's going to add a lot of depth to a Winnipeg team that is pretty good with it, but probably needed a little bit more of it. And Matt Halashuk's going to bring just that. And then their two biggest moves this offseason both came in the form of trades. They acquired right winger Devin Setaguchi coming over from the Minnesota Wild in exchange for a draft pick. Devin Setaguchi coming off two very disappointing seasons with the Minnesota Wild. Um... <laughs> And basically has not been the same player uh, since since his final years in San Jose, or since the year before his final year in San Jose. He really has just been not the same. But he's still a young player, so hopefully the playing with a guy playing on the top line with a guy like um, with a guy like Brian Little, or playing on the second line with a youngster like Mark Shifley, who's most likely also going to get a full-time spot to start the year. Um, maybe that could rejuvenate him because when he's at his best, this is a guy who's a, basically a 25 50 goal scorer, 50 point scorer. He's a sniper and he's got a pretty deadly wrist shot too. So um, I think if he plays well, he could be a great addition for the Winnipeg Jets. And then the, the other big trade acquisition they made, they acquire right winger Michael Froelich coming over from the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks in exchange for a couple of draft picks. Um, <laughs> and for the Winnipeg Jets, they should consider themselves very lucky to be getting this guy. I'm still surprised to this day that the Blackhawks traded him because he was one of their top penalty killers. Let's face it, the scoring days for Michael Froelich seem like, that, seem like that's not going to be the case anymore. A former 10th overall pick back in 2010, still a pretty young player, so he could also become a scorer again, but the past few years it's looked highly unlikely. 
However, his defensive, with the lack of his offensive play and his offensive play declining, his defensive play has not has been getting better. He was one of the top penalty killers for the Chicago Blackhawks last year, and he's going to be one of the top penalty killers for the Winnipeg Jets. And because he just won the Stanley Cup, he now has experience under his belt, so he'll bring that to Winnipeg to a team that needs it as well. They need more Stanley Cup experience. And again, it's just another player from the Chicago Blackhawks coming over to join guys like Andrew Ladd and Dustin Bufflin. I mean, Froelich never played in Chicago when those guys were there, but it's still the, the, a lot of former Chicago Blackhawks on this team now. So Winnipeg looking pretty good <laughs> but right now, at least up front. <laughs> On um, the Brian Little, Blake Wheeler, Andrew Ladd, you know, that's a good top line. Mark Shifley, again, he's definitely going to get a start this season. Um, he'll be the start as the second line center, most likely, with Devin Setaguchi and Evander Kane. Ole Jokinen will mo probably move down to being the third line center, um, at least to start with Michael Froelich and Matt Hallis Chuck on the wings. That's a pretty decent third line, actually. And it'll be interesting to see throughout the year but what's going to happen between Ole Jokinen and Mark Shifley to see which one is the second-line center and which one's the third-line center. I think Shifley will be the second line to start, but you never know. Um, that will is yet to be seen. And then for the fourth line, Jim Slater, uh, James Wright, and Eric Tangredi with Chris Thorburn, a longtime uh, player. And another player who's actually still here coming over from the Atlanta Thrashers. Um, he is um, he is probably going to be the 13th forward. So they have a decent forward corpse. And on defense, I'm that's where kind of where I have some questions, honestly. Yeah, they got Dustin Bufflin up there. But his conditioning is very poor. And he continues to gain weight. So um, there, which explains his lack in offensive play last season prior to compared to the last couple years. They got Tobias Enstrom there, Zach Bogosian signed up long term, Grant Klitsum, Mark Stewart, Jake Truba, he's gonna get a chance this year to start the year. And then again at the seventh and eighth guys, Paul Posma, who is gonna be a good offensive defenseman, and Adam Party, who they just signed over. So their defense is okay. Their forwards are very good. The big question for the Winnipeg Jets this season is in goal. Andre Pavlik, once again, needs to be better. He absolutely needs to be better. And, you know, although he does continue to finish with an over 500 rec record, he keep, continues to do it by just one game. And he's going to be a guy playing most of the games. Al Montoya is the backup goaltender, and he's probably not going to see a whole lot of playing time. So they really need Andre Pavlik to step his game up to a whole new level. I, From seeing him play, to me, he definitely has the potential to do so. He's very capable of being a legitimate number one goaltender, but we have not seen it yet. And a lot of that could have to do with the team in front of him. Um, this is a team that for the past few years have finished 24th or under in goals allowed per game since 2006-2007. Um, so that's something that's going to have to change. And that's one of the big questions in Winnipeg. And another big question, too, again, of course, involving Mark Shifley and Jake Truba. Are they going to thrive well in their first seasons? Will they be up for the full season? Can Zach Bogosian take his game up to a new level? Can Blake Wheeler do that as well. Can Evander Kane? Can Devin Setaguchi? Can Ole Jokinen? Ole Jokinen to me is probably the big one here. He did not have a good season last year. Well, had one another reason that Alex Burmistrov left actually. Um, but <laughs> he definitely needs to be a player, better player, despite being 34 years of age. Um, hopefully reuniting with Michael Froelich. Um, actually, no. Um, both of them have experience playing for the Florida Panthers, um, th though not in this at the same time. Um, but hopefully that experience could d develop a, at least a little bit of chemistry. So, yeah, 
a lot of things, a lot of questions for the Winnipeg Jets this season. Again, the big concern is in goal with Andre Pavlik and Al Montoya. Um, that's going to be key here. All right, so let's take a look at the top prospects from the Winnipeg Jets. Very, very, very deep prospect pool indeed. They have a very deep prospect pool, probably the second deepest prospect pool in the division. Only the Chicago Blackhawks have a deeper prospect pool than the Winnipeg Jets, but they are deeper than the Colorado Avalanche, Dallas Stars, um, St. Louis Blues, um, Minnesota Wild, and the Nashville Predators. So I like this prospect pool a lot. Jake Truba is the unquestioned number one with Mark Shifley at number two. No question about that. Josh Morrissey, their first-round pick from last year, a defenseman, an off, a two-way defenseman with an offensive upside. He's number three. Zach Redman on there at number five. They have a lot of good players on here, but the player that probably catches my eye the most of anyone is probably their number nine prospect center, Nicholas Patan. Nick Patan uh, was the Jets' second round pick this past year, number 43. He's only five foot nine, 165 pounds. However, last year for the Portland Winter Hawks, he played on the best line in the whole league with Ty Ratty and Brendan Leipzig, and he tied with Brendan Leipzig as the leading scorer in the entire Western Hockey League, although he technically finished second because Brendan Leipzig had more goals, had three more goals. But this is a guy who is going another small Brad Marchant type player, just like Brendan Leipzig. And this is a kid who, in the future years, he's going to be one heck of an offensive player for the Winnipeg Jets. And one day, I can totally see this kid becoming their top, one of their top prospects. So watch out for Nick Patan. After a couple of years of development, this kid's going to be a top six forward for sure maybe even a top line forward, and could be their next offensive star. So definitely something to look forward to there. Now, the player on the Win this Winnipeg Jets team that needs to play better this season, there's a lot of guys on this team that need to step on this, step up their game, particularly Ole Okunen and Zach Bogosian. It's definitely between those two, but the guy I've chosen between those two no question whatsoever, is Zach Bogosian. Former third overall draft pick from 2008, has played five seasons, projected as an offensive defenseman with a physical presence, and has never had more than 30 points. Now they sign him up long-term, a seven-year deal, a deal worth a long years and a lot of money, a deal, in my opinion, he should never have gotten. I'll be very honest with you, but... Now, because of that deal, he just needs to step up his game. He absolutely needs to step up his game if he hopes to have a long future in Winnipeg. Um, you know, he's got a big body, a very hard shot from the point, but he has potential. He needs to show that potential. He has to have a breakout year this year. This needs to be the year that Zach Bogosian needs to be among the top scoring defensemen in the National Hockey League. He absolutely does. If he can do that, then this team will be in pretty good shape. Overall, are the Winnipeg Jets a playoff team? This is technically the year where they probably should make the playoffs, but to be very honest, I'm not convinced. I think they have too many players that need to step up their game and too many players that, in my opinion, have the tendency not to do so. So I think, honestly... There's going to be one more year where they're not going to make the playoffs. I think that it's going to take them another year to make the playoffs and for the players to fully develop. Um, and also, Andre Pavlik needs to be a pinch better. So they are definitely going to be in that bubble mix with the Minnesota Wild, Dallas Stars, and Phoenix Coyotes. But between those four bubble teams, I think the Minnesota Wild will probably get the eighth spot overall. I'm not convinced with the Jets. I think they need one more season to blossom so there you have it all right guys that'll do it for episode 16 of hockey on the spot that'll do it for our central division tour and our western conference tour starting tomorrow we start our tour around the new atlantic division and the eastern conference when we talk about the boston bruins so until then this has been hockey on the spot with brandon barenfeld i'm brandon barenfeld thank you guys for watching i'll see you all tomorrow thank you all and have a great day